Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Come on, open your mouth, sign it. Come on, give God the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Come on, pray this our God and pray it to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Hallelujah. Beautiful for situation. Joy of the offer. Hallelujah. Come on, pray this our God and greatly to be praised. Come on. Open your mouth if God has been good to you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Open your mouth. Come on. Hallelujah. This is the time. Glory to God to give God worship. This is the time to give God praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We magnify him. We glorify him. Hallelujah. We lift him up. Hallelujah. We honor him. Hallelujah. It's prayer time in the temple. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come to thank you this morning. We come to give you praise. We come to give you due praise. Thank you, God. This morning, oh God, because you've been better to us, oh God, than we've been to ourselves. And God, we praise your name. We thank you for being God. We thank you for being good. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being our friend. Oh God, we thank you today, God, in the name of Jesus, before we ask for anything. God, we just want to tell you thank you for everything. We come with praise. We come with adoration this morning, oh God, because we realize if it had not been for you on our side, we don't know where we would be or what we would be doing. But God, I thank you this morning, oh God, that you clothed us, oh God. That you woke us up this morning, oh God. That you breathed the breath of life in us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we say thank you this morning, oh God. Thank you for giving us the use and the activities of our lives. Thank you for the blood that's running warm in our veins, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, oh God. Because if it had not been for you, Jesus, oh God, we could have been in our grave this morning, oh God. God, we could have been in the ICU ward this morning. But God, we tell you thank you this morning. God, we don't want to take it for granted. Hallelujah, God, you've been mighty good to us, oh God. Hallelujah, God, we say thank you, oh God. Nothing good that we've done to deserve it, Father. We didn't cross every T, we didn't die every I. God, I thank you, God, we didn't always get it right. But God, I thank you for having mercy on us this morning. Thank you, oh God, for loving us, oh God. Thank you for embracing us, oh God. Thank you for wrapping your arms around us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we praise you this morning. In the name of Jesus, God, we had 10,000 tongues. Oh, God, it still wouldn't be enough. But, God, we want to do the best that we can with the one that we have, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we owe you this praise this morning. We owe you this hand clap this morning. We owe you, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we owe you this hand clap, this foot stomp. God, we thank you, God. We owe you this holler this morning. We owe you this thank you this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God. God, we've entered into your gates with thanksgiving. And we've entered into your courts with praise. Oh, God, we come to bless your name this morning, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, God. God, we thank you today. Oh, God, we believe, oh, God. If we praise you, God, we'll feel better. We believe this morning, oh, God. If we just praise you, God, you're turning some things around. We just believe and we praise you this morning, God. That you're setting some things in order, Father. We thank you this morning and we just praise you, oh, God. That the devil will get mad, God. We thank you this morning, oh, God. That we just open our mouth and give you glory. God, that you will meet us where we are, oh, God. And so, Lord, we say thank you this morning, God. Jesus, oh God, we bless your name, God. We give you praise, thank you. Hallelujah, God, we thank you this morning, God. We worship you, oh God, in the beauty of holiness, God. We praise you this morning, God, because praise is coming to the people of God. It's common among us, God. This is what we do, oh God, when we want to be close to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we praise you this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you to praise this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, I believe it. We praise you this morning. Sick bodies will be healed, God. I believe it. We praise you this morning, God. Our children shall be saved. I thank you. We praise you this morning, God. Hallelujah, God. I thank you that our lives will be delivered, God. I thank you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God, have your way in this place today. Do what you will to do, Father. Do what you want to do, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, we do ask for forgiveness of our sins this morning. Everything that we said, done, and thought about, Father, that was not like you. Father, forgive us in the name of Jesus. Wash our plate clean today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, cleanse us, oh God, from all unrighteousness, God. Cleanse us, oh God, from this filthiness of this flesh, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Oh God, wash us whiter than snow. Purchase with hyssop this morning, God. In the name of 
Lord Jesus. And God, we thank you today, oh God. Thank you, God, for your people who have assembled in this place today. God, you see, you know what your people stand in need of even before they ask. And so, Lord, we say have your way in their lives today. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you because you know what to do. You know how to do it. God, remember every prayer request today, oh God. Remember every petition that's up before you today, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God, we want to hear petition granted this morning. In the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you today, oh God. As we seek your face, God, even the more. Hallelujah. We seek after your heart even the more, Father. God, that we will hear those words, petition granted. And so, Lord, we thank you today. God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. God, remember those in the hospital this morning. Remember those in the convalescent home. Remember those in prison this morning. God, remember those that's not just in the physical prison, but God, some people are in uh, uh, emotional prisons, mental prisons, Father. God, they're in bondages that they seem like they can't get out of, Father. But Father, set the captive free this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you today. God, remember the White House this morning. God, while you remember the White House, remember our house. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you today, oh God. You know what to do, God, so have your way. Even now, God, make ways where there seem to be no way. Father, I declare and believe, God, that your word says that you are the way. You are the truth and the life. And so, Lord, we thank you today, God, that we live our abundant life this morning. Not only because of you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that we walk in the newness of life this morning. God, because of you this morning. And so, Lord, we praise you. We thank you, God. Remember every person on the prayer request list. In the name of Jesus, God, remember every bereaved family. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you today. God, you see and you know. God, comforts and peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, we thank you. Oh, God, we praise you. God, we give you glory. Father, we turn the further part of this service over to you, oh, God, that you would have your way. Father, we submit to your will. We submit to your authority. God, in the name of Jesus, God, we open up our minds. We open up our spirits, oh, God, to receive that which you have for us. Father, we thank you, God. We can't do nothing until you come. Holy Spirit, have thine own way. Father, I thank you now that you have an open invitation in this place. God, come and take a seat in here. In the name of Jesus, let your Shekinah glory rest full and abide in here, each now and forevermore. Father, we thank you now. And God, we give you the praise and the glory. Touch every person like you've never touched them before. Father, remember our listening audience today. Father, you see and you know what they stand in need of. You know every need. You know every desire. You know every request. Father, we submit it to you today, God, in the name of Jesus. God, you're good at handling things, and so, Lord, we give it to you. Hallelujah, God, I thank you that you're good at taking care of matters, so we give it to you. In the name of Jesus, and so, Lord, we praise you. We thank you, and we honor you today. God, have your way, God, like never before. Father, we thank you, and we give you praises in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Come on and clap your hands and tell God thank you. Come on, if you believe that God heard your prayer. Hallelujah, come on and tell him thank you. Hallelujah, come on, bless the Lord on my soul. Hallelujah, and all that's within me, come on, bless his name. Hallelujah, I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah, I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah, we give him praise and we give him glory and honor. Amen. At this time, we're going into our praise and worship service.
make some noise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on and make some noise in this place. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. The way you feel, you won't feel that way. I'm a Sunday, yeah, yeah, my master. Anymore. Hallelujah. Name of Jesus. Lift it high. Lift it high. Lift it high. Name of Jesus. Lift it high.
in it to win. I'm in it to win. I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning side. Hallelujah, I'm on the winning side. It might look like I'm losing, but don't be fooled by what you see. Don't be fooled by what you see. Don't believe what you see. But see what you believe. myself coming out. I see myself coming through. I see myself being restored. I see myself being renewed. I see my body being healed. I see my mind being delivered. I see my family making it. I see my finances increasing. I see my household being blessed. I see it. I see it. I see it. going to the enemy camp. Taking back everything that was stolen from me. Everything that he took from me. I see myself getting it back. I see myself getting it back better. I see myself getting it back double. I see myself getting it back stuff bad enough because I'm not convinced this morning hallelujah that you even want to approach the enemy's camp hallelujah some of you still scared of the enemy hallelujah but the Lord is my life <laughs> and my salvation who shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life who shall I be afraid when the wicked They stumble and they fail.
Bank corporate. Come on, let's make it corporate. If you got feet, I want to see you dance. Come on, if you got feet, if you got feet, tell me see you do your dance. Oh, come on, y'all ain't dancing. Y'all ain't unto you, and you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. And by the word of their testimony, and they love, know their lives unto death. There is a time and purpose for everything. There's a time to go through, and there's a time to come out. But in all we go through, we overcome with Jesus Christ. If I had to have a topic for today, it would be, this test is just your testimony. Test is defined as an event or situation that reveals the strength or quality of someone or something by putting them under strength. When beginning our Christian journey, some of us may have thought that it was going to be smooth sailing because now God is on our side. Well, I hate to rain on your parade, but sadly, that's not the truth. Nowhere in the Bible does it say everything will be easy or if you follow everything the word says, you won't face any tests or trials. Nobody even in the Bible went without suffering. Job lost all his children, crops, and animals just in one day. Joseph's brothers stole his coat and sold him into slavery. The three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace. Even Jesus suffered. He was put on the cross to die for each and every one of our sins. But that's the message for another day. You may be asking yourself, why do we even go through tests and trials? Trials are a part of God's plans for our lives. God knows exactly what's going to happen to us at all times. And he reassured, reassures us that we're going to get through in Psalms 46 and 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. 
I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. Trials also show God's power and require us to lean on him and depend on him for his help. Tests and trials aren't always easy. In most cases, they're found to be extremely difficult. But everyone will face a test and trial at some point in their life, whether it be a financial crisis or a health challenge. But here's some tips to help you get through. Remember that God is always with you, and you should talk to him. You are never alone, like never alone. Joshua 1 and 9 says, have not... Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithsoever thou goest. God is with you wherever you are. He's with you through the good, the bad, when you're sinning, and when you're living right. Since God is with you, you might as well talk to him. God is the only person who keeps your information truly confidential. He's a great listener, and sometimes he gives really great advice. Your response makes all the difference. You can only control you. You may not be able to control the situation, but you can control how you react. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. We should choose to react with grace. Yes, it's okay to cry for a moment, but that doesn't mean we stay there. Pick yourself up and choose to glorify God, even through what you're going through. Your praise is what's going to get you through it. Talk to someone. Open up and share how you're feeling with someone else. You're never alone with God, but you're never alone with your family, friends, pastors, co-workers, and just other people in your life. Oftentimes, I hear my mom say, talking and opening up is like throwing up. You feel better after you do it. This simple yet sometimes hard thing can really allow you to truly feel free and hurt. Now here's the part where you can jump, shout, and rejoice, okay. if you haven't already. Okay. The testimony. A testimony is defined as proof or evidence that something exists or is true. A testimony tells just how great God's been to you. God brought you out of something that could have killed you, destroyed you, or left you in a dark place. But why are testimonies important? If you were in court and you testified, you're telling your story of what happened and what you saw because you were there. You are an eyewitness to what happened. When you testify, you are being the eyewitness to what God has done for you. Sometimes we find ourselves being scared or ill-prepared to share our testimony because we feel like it's not as big as someone else's or we don't have enough knowledge about God to share. But that fear can be holding someone else back from getting saved. If you have come to know Christ as your Lord and Savior and if he has changed your heart and your life, that's all you need. Your story of the work and power of Jesus in your life is the most convincing and powerful way to share the gospel. People of God, if you walk away with anything today, let it be that the test that you're going through right now will soon be your testimony. Tests and trials are hard, but with God and others by your side, we can make it through. Choosing to praise and glorify God during your test can really make all the difference. Once the trial is over, don't forget to thank God for what he's done for you. And don't hold all that good news to yourself. Share your testimony with others and share with them how God brought you through what he did. You may be the only Bible that some people will read. You may, oh, and your testimony can truly be the change in someone else's life. Everyone has a testimony, whether it's God saved me from cancer or he just woke me up this morning. Remember today that you will make it through this storm. And when it's over, don't forget to testify and tell us the great news about God's great works. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Truly, we honor the Lord today. Amen. We honor Pastor Lynch. Amen. Amen. To Apostle Clay. Amen. Amen. To all of the ministers. Amen. Everybody in the house. Amen. We thank God for thank you, you, Lord. and you being in the house of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Acts chapter 27 and verse number 22 says, And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whom I am, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as was told me. How be it we must, somebody said we must be cast upon a certain island. 
Amen. Let's skip over to verse number 41. 41 says, And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship around, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves, and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to serve, save Paul, kept them from their kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came past that they escaped all safe to land. Amen. That last verse says, and they all escaped safe to land. I want to use for a simple subject on this morning. Hold on to what you got. Amen. Hold on to what you got. Amen. This morning, we're going to take a little walk. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to take a little walk down the road of destiny lane. Okay. Realizing that every one of us has a purpose and every one of us has a reason for being that before we are ushered into eternity, each of us has a destiny that's been ordained for us to reach while we're here on earth. Yeah. The word destiny is defined as something to which a person or a thing is decreed beforehand. It's, predeter it's a predetermined course of events often held to be irresistible power or an agency. So reiterating, you have a purpose for being here and you have an ultimate destination of where you're supposed to end up before you leave this life. Yes. That we can be assured of. God planned it that way when he made you, but it's, it's the unfamiliar part. It's the part that we don't know. It's the part that keeps us in questions, uh, that causes us to have trust issues, that causes us to get off track sometimes. How are we going to get there? Jesus. When are we going to get there? How long is it going to take? What's going to take place in between here and there? Why me, God? Who? When? Why? How? What? All of these questions at the forefront of our mind keeps you boggled and tossed back and forth when if you just walk out the plan and the purpose of God for your life, you'll see that you'll stay on course a lot better and you don't have to be all out of whack going back and forth. James said it like this, he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Then he went on to say that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. All of this is boggling down your mind. You got a destiny that you got to get to. And God has already promised you that destiny. He's already said that I have an expected end for you. But you want to get all the details. You want to figure out A from Z. And you want to figure out what he's going to do, who he's going to do it through, how he's going to do it. When your task is just to get to the destiny. That's Come on, right. somebody. That's right. But you got all of this stuff boggling down your mind. But let me remind you with Philippians 4 and 8. It's here to comfort you and in, to, to interrupt the confusion of your mind to say, finally, brethren, uh -huh. whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. That's good news, ain't it? You see, these are the type of things that we ought to be holding on to. What he's already said, what he's already promised, what he told us to think about. Now, I dare not set a false stage before you and tell you that on your way to your destiny, everything is going to be peaceful. I dare not tell you that. I dare not tell you that everything is going to be lovely. I dare not stand up here and tell you that you won't have any troubles, that you won't have any trials. No, no, no. I dare not tell you that. But what I will say today is that God's will is good and is perfect 
and his will is acceptable. You see, while we're on our way to our destiny, you'll encounter some storms that will try to knock the life out of you. You'll encounter some speed bumps that want to slow you down. You'll encounter some enemies that want to devour and eat you up. But you got to hold on to what you got. And you got to stay determined that I'm in it to win it. That I'm pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You got to know that this race is not given to the swift, neither the battle to the strong. But I'm determined to endure until the end. I'm going to make it to my destiny. Tell somebody, I'm going to make it to my destiny. Make it to my destiny. These are the things that we've got to hold on to. These are the things that you've got to hold on to. What you already have access to. Yes. As a child of God, you already have access to every promise that he's made in the book. Yes. So in the midst of your storms, you can reach back and grab it and still make it to your destiny. When you feel like you don't have anything else, sometimes you just got to grab hope of what is already promised. Yes. 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 You may not have the money yet. That's right. yes. You may not have the job yet. Yes. Yes. You may not have the gift yet. But hold on to what he's already promised. Yes. But this is where we mess up. We take our eyes off of ourselves and we start comparing ourselves to others. Thank you, Lord. Well, if I had what they had, if I had the opportunity that they had, if I had the opportunity, I would have done the same thing that they did. If I had the money to go to college, I would have went to the same college they went to. Uh, I would have did the same thing. Uh, I'm a single parent and they got somebody, they married, they got somebody to help them. They got somebody to help them along the way. I'm by myself. I don't have the job that they have. Honey, if he gave you a $9 job, work the $9, pay your tithes, and watch God make a way for you. You may not have the six-figure job, but use what you got. Hold on to what you got and watch God make a way for you. We start comparing ourselves to others instead of focusing on what we've already been That's given. Right. That's right. You see, you may not have the, the million dollars because you might not be ready for it. A lot of people had the million dollars and still committed suicide because they weren't happy. You might not be ready for the luxury cars and the luxury house because you, God already knew that you were going to worship it instead of worshiping him. You might not be ready for the big congregation because it will cause your head to swell and give you give pride the opportunity to run rampant. You might not be ready for the job yet because your character and your attitude wasn't going to sustain you there. Listen, stop trying to live out someone else's life and live your own purpose and live your own destiny. Amen. Can God trust you with what he's already, already given you? You got to trust the process and trust that he's working it out yes. for you. But you got to hold on with what you got. And guess what? You got to deal with you. Yes. Tell somebody, deal with yourself. Deal with, deal with yourself. Stop trying to be like the Joneses. Yes. Stop trying to be like the Johnsons. Oh Stop trying to be like the Smiths. Yes. And deal with yourself. Yes. You see, everybody has a time and everybody has a turn. Yes. It might not be your turn right now. It might not be your time right now, but don't get mad at the process. You can't avoid the process, yes. but keep selling to your destiny. Yes. Your time is going to come. Yes. Your turn is going to come. Yes. But you got to hold on to what you got. Yes. Yes. You got to hold on. That was your, that was your cue. Right? You missed it. You got to hold on to what you got. Yes. Just, like, just like the other prisoners that was on the ship. As they sailed to Italy, they watched Paul. They kept their eyes on Paul, how he acted, and what he said, and what he did. My brothers and my sisters today, you are somebody's hope today. Yes, Lord. In the midst of your storm, in the midst of what you're going through, you are somebody's hope today. Somebody is depending on you to make it. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's success or somebody's failure is going to depend on what they see in you. My God. Somebody's depending on you to hold on and to hold out and to make it. Jesus. Now this trip is not always easy. Sometimes you're going to encounter some storms. Things will look all the way opposite of what God has promised 
And sometimes it seems like God is nowhere even in sight at all. In times like this, you've got to hold on yes. to what you got. Yes. The songwriter said, in times like these, yes. make sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Solid rock. This rock is Jesus, said he is the one. Yes. If you don't have anything else to hold on to, you can hold on to Jesus because he'll get you over to the other side. Yes. My friends, today you have an appointment with destiny that you don't want to miss. Destiny is calling you, telling you to come, telling you to come, telling you to come to where God has ordained you to be, and you've got to get there. Now, I won't go into the details and the story, but Acts 26 and 27 tells us of the Apostle Paul's experiences as a prisoner and his encounters with Festus and Agrippa trying to accuse him of something wrong and trying to find a reason to kill Paul. You have to understand that on your way to your destiny, you have a common enemy and his job is to kill and to steal and to destroy. His job is to make sure that you don't make it to your destiny. His job is to make sure that you throw in the towel. His job is to make sure that you give up and that you give in. His job is to make sure that you turn your back on God. His job is to make sure that you don't make it to where God has already ordained for you to be. But with every encounter, guess what Paul did? With every encounter, they could not find a reason or uh, anything to blame Paul on. So Paul took opportunity of this and took advantage of it to witness and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul still held on to what he had. He had his testimony and he had the good report of the Lord Jesus Christ. They tried to put a lie on Paul. But Paul kept proclaiming the name of Jesus. They tried to say bad things about him. But Paul said, all I got to do is offer you Jesus. They tried to turn him around and make him look bad. Paul said, all I got is Jesus. Long story short, they made up in their minds that they were going to go ahead and sail to Rome, Italy, so that Paul could appear before Caesar. You see, that's where his destiny was. His destiny wasn't with Festus. His destiny wasn't with Agrippa. You see, it was destined that Paul be brought to appear before Caesar. Yes. Just like it's been destined that your gift will make room for you and bring you amongst great men and women. Just like it's been destined that you're going to be on top of the world. Just like it's been destined that you succeed and have your own business. Just like it's been destined that you're the head and not the tail. Just as it's been destined that you're the lender and not the borrower. Just as it's been destined that you have more than enough. That you have the six-figure salary. But you've got to hold on to what you got. you got to hold on to what you got. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, that God has dealt unto every man a measure of faith. Measure. Your measure may not be my measure. Right. My measure may not be your measure. But one thing about it, we all got some. Right. Right. I know it doesn't seem like it, but you've got to realize that today you've been equipped with everything that you need to make it to your destiny. Yes. We always say, well, I don't have any help and I need somebody to help me or I wish I had more people or I wish I had more money or I wish I had this and I wish I had that. But the Bible says God has given you the power to have wealth. He's given it already unto you. Thank you, Lord. It's enough to sustain you and to help you to get to the other side. What you do with it and how you react is what's going to determine your outcome and your results. You remember the story of the talents, how the nine increased their talents and they received the blessings of the Lord. And then there was one that only had one talent and he went and hid his talent and he received nothing. Jesus. Sometimes it's us that mess up our own destiny because we didn't do what we were supposed to do. That's right. On our way to our destiny, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. We were supposed to increase our faith. We were supposed to praise him along the way. We were supposed to take courage in the Lord. Exactly. We were supposed to keep on going. We were supposed to encourage our brothers and our sisters, but instead, we sitting somewhere down and depressed. Instead, we the ones throwing in the towel. Instead, we're the ones that's giving up. Instead, we're the ones that's saying, I can't make it. It's you that hit your own talent, and you receive nothing Jesus. of the Lord. A lot of us feel like we've been dealt a bad hand in life, 
We feel like we've not been given the opportunity or the chance to take advantage of the advantages that others have. We didn't grow up with a silver spoon in our mouths. Uh, some of us really had to struggle. Some of us are still struggling. Some of us had to work hard. Some of us have, feel like we're all alone. Uh, some of us, we don't like the way that we look when the Bible says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Some of us feel like we don't have what we need when he said, and my God shall supply all of your needs. Some of us feel like we're by ourselves when he already said, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Some of us feel like we're weak and we can't go on when he said he's given power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. That's what you got to hold on to. In the midst of your storms, your faith is going to be tested. Trials will knock you down. Tribulations will try to overtake you. Yeah. But you've got to hold on. Doubt will try to make you not believe what God has said. But you've got to know that it's already been settled. While Paul and the prisoners were selling, they encountered what was called a Eurachlodon, Eurachlodon storm. Uh -huh. And the wind was boisterous. And the storm caused the boat to shipwreck. Yes. And they tried to lighten the load. They tried to throw out the anchor. But none of this seemed to win against the storm. Right. Some of them even began to lose hope. As the storms were tearing things apart, Paul had to keep it together because all eyes were still on him. Yes. Ain't it good to know that when everything else around you is falling apart, that God will still keep it together just for you. Oh, he'll hold it together until you get it together. He'll hold it together until you make it together. He'll hold it together until it comes together. I come to tell you, Paul had to hold on to what he had. And that was the promise of God. I come to tell you today, saints of God, to hold on to what you've got. It may seem like you don't have a whole lot, but hold on to what you got. I come to tell somebody, no matter how big or small, hold on to what you got. I come to tell somebody today, you may not have nothing but a jar of oil, but if you hold on to what you got, it's enough to get you out of debt. I come to tell somebody, you might only have a rod in your hand, but it's enough to cause the waters to separate so that you can make it to the other side. I come to tell you, you might not have nothing, but your faith to touch is garment. But if you hold on, he'll make you whole. I come to tell somebody, you might not have anything but a slingshot and a few smooth stones. But hold on, hold on to what you got. It'll cause the giants to be defeated in your life. I come to tell you, you might just have a dance in your feet. You might just have a praise on your lips. But hold on, hold on to what you got. Hold on and reach your destiny. Because it's been destined huh, that you make it to the other side. Huh. You may not have anything huh, but a promise from God. Huh. But I come to tell you, huh, hold on to the promise. Huh. Hold on to the promise. Huh. Hold on to the promise. Huh. Because it's still good. Huh. It's still good. Huh. And the promise huh, will get you to the other side. Yes. Thank you, God. It'll get you to the other side. The main thing that the prisoners failed to realize, and this is the main thing that you've got to hold on to. Paul had already told them in these four verses. He said, an angel appeared before me. The angel of God, whose I am and who I serve, saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. Jesus. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Mm -hmm. So the angel said, you got to get there. Jesus. It's been destined for you to get there. Yes, and everybody that's on the ship, they got to get there too. Oh, they gotta get there. That was a promise. Thank you, Lord. And he said, be of good cheer. Mm -hmm. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told. How be it, we must cast up on. He didn't say we might. He said we must. we must. 
cast upon a certain island. In other words, it's destined for us to get before Caesar. It's destined regardless of the storm. Regardless of how the boat is torn apart. Regardless of how your life is shipwrecked. Regardless of what comes to interrupt God's plan for your life. You still got to make it to the other side. Lord Jesus. But they failed to realize who was on the boat with them. God was with them. He had already given the promise. Saints, if you just realize that God is with you. Thank you, God. If you just realize that God is still there every step of the way, even when it don't seem like he's there, Thank you, God, God is still with you every step of the way. Yes, he is. Because he wants you to make it to the other side. He wants you to make it to your destiny. So today, you have a choice. You can swim. You can grab a board or you can make it on the broken pieces. Lord Jesus. Some of us can swim. Jesus. That's those that really trust God, that have no doubt. Believe in God for everything that he said and just swim smoothly to the other side. You see people in pools that swimming, just like it ain't nothing. If I get out there in the water, we're going to have some trouble because I can't swim. So we're going to have some trouble. So I, I'm not a swimmer. I might can't even grab a board. Because I'm afraid that the board might not do what it's supposed to do. But there are some people that believe some things and believe some things that God has said. So they grab the board and hold on to that. If that's all you got to hold on to, hold on to it. And make it to the other side. So then there are some of us that just have the broken pieces. When it seems like everything else ain't coming together, just grab a piece of what he said. Just grab a piece of what he said. You don't even have to have the whole word. Just grab a piece of what he said and hold on to it. Let it take you to the other side. But you got a choice. You can't quit. You can't give up. But you got to make it to the other side. You've been destined to make it. You've been destined to get there. You've been destined to arrive to appear before Caesar. Thank you, Jesus. My brothers and my sisters today, I just come to encourage you to hold on to God. Thank you, Lord. Hold on to what you've got. Thank you, Jesus. Even in this storm of life, you've been destined to make it safe to land. Thank you, Lord. Your current situation is not how the story ends. Jesus. That's good news right there. Thank your current situation is not how the story ends. Thank God. Amen. Even if you turn to the back of the book, you'll see that you won. You'll see that you made it. You'll see that you survived. You'll see that it wasn't as bad as it seemed that it was. You'll see that God was with you every step of the way. You'll see that this trip really was worth it. You'll see that the storm couldn't hold me down. You'll see that high water, low water, no water at all could keep me from getting to my destiny I come to tell somebody today hold on to what you got because it's been determined that you make it to your destiny Jeremiah read in, uh, this morning in 29 and 11 of Jeremiah saying that I know the plans that I have for you plans of good and not of evil to give you an expected end it's already been planned that you win saints it's already been determined that you make it so if a storm comes in your life, I believe it was Douglas Miller said, if the wind keeps on blowing, yes, Lord. and even if the storms don't cease, guess what? My soul, My soul has been anchored in the Lord. As yes. long as you're anchored in the Lord, as long as you're rooted and grounded in the Lord, he's going to hold you up. Jesus. It might seem like the water is coming around your feet. It may seem like the water is coming around your legs. It may seem like the water is coming up around your knees and your thighs and your hips and on your back and all the way up your chest and to your neck. But just before the water overtakes you, guess what? He'll reach down and pick you up and carry you safely to the other side. He'll do it for you. So you got a choice today. You can swim. You can grab a board. Or you can make it on the broken pieces. But you, I want you to make it. There's no option there. I want you to make it. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to make it. Whatever your destiny is today, yes, saints, God. make it to your destiny. And all you got to do is hold on to everything that you've got. It may not seem like it's a lot, 
You may not have it yet. You may not have what you want. You may not have what you desire, but it's on the way. It's on the way. Even in our current situation, God is still good. Yes, he is. Even if everything is going on when it seems like the economy is being destroyed and the economy is being torn down, Thank God you. is still blessing. Yes, he is. As long as the world is still turning, then God has not stopped moving. Yes, God. He's still God. Thank you, Lord. And he's still on the throne. Like we said this morning, he still reigns. Yes, he does. Now, if he stopped reigning, you got a problem. Got a problem. If he come off the throne, you got a problem. You got a problem. If he's defeated, you got a problem. Oh, yes. But guess what? what? It ain't going to happen. He's still on the throne. Yes, and he God. reigns for God. Forever. God. He reigns forever. Yes. And evermore. evermore. That's why we sing the praises to our king. Because yes, he is the king of every king. He's the Lord of every Lord. Yes, and he reigns yes. forever. Yes, Saints, hold on to what you got. Because you got to make it to the other side. Amen. 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 We're standing this afternoon. Praise God. You've got to make it to yes, the other Lord. side. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You've got to make it thank to you, the Lord. other side. Hi, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for today. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for your presence thank in this you, place. Lord. God, we thank you for everything that's said and done. God, we bless your name today. Father, we pray that we ask that our hearts have been encouraged today, God, by your presence and by your spirit. Father, we pray and ask that you would do what needs to be done in the lives of your people, God. Forgive us of our sins. God, wash us and cleanse us in your blood, God. Forgive us, God, for the thoughts of our minds, God. Help us to be encouraged and not discouraged, God. Help us, God, to be encouraged and not depressed, God. Help us to be encouraged, God, and not oppressed, God. Knowing that you will come through for us, God. Knowing that you will move strong on our behalf, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Help us, God, to minister for you, God. Help us to witness for you, God. Help us to encourage somebody else, God. Even in the face of Thank adversity, Lord. God, help us to keep on going, God, until we reach the destiny yes, that you have ordained God. for us, God, yes, that you have ordained for your people, God. Yes, we bless Lord. you today. God, we give you honor. We give you glory. And we give you praise. Yes, God, remember God. every house that's represented here Jesus. today. God, do what needs to be done in the lives of your people, God. Yes, God. Have your way, God, in our homes. God, have your way in our lives, God. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Name we, of submit, Jesus. we submit our will to you, God, in the name of Jesus, Thank God. You, that you would do what needs to be done, God, in the name of in Jesus. God, encourage Jesus. our hearts, God. Even in such a time as this, such help us not to give up. Help us not to give in, God, with every storm, God. Help us to learn what we need to learn, God, yes, and go through with our heads held high, God. In the name of in Jesus, name help of us Jesus. to lift our heads, God, in the sanctuary, in the name of Jesus, God, and trust you every step of the way, God. We give you all the glory, God. We give you all the honor, God, and we give your name to praise. In Jesus' name we pray and we praise. Come on and clap your hands in this place. Amen. Thank you so much for listening to our broadcast today. To hear more of these messages, we invite you to attend one of our worship experiences. We're sure you'll be blessed and encouraged. Check out our website, refugehouseofgod.org, for more details. Or call our church office at 704-697-9752. The Lord bless you and keep you as our prayer. God bless.